start with an update from Jammu and Kashmir. The police have arrested one suspect in the murder of veteran journalist Shujaat Bukhari. He was gunned down alongside his police security guards right outside his office last evening. The suspect has been identified as Zubair Qadri. He was seen in video footage stealing the pistol of the police officer who was shot dead along with Bukhari. The police had earlier asked the public to help identify the suspect who was seen first leaning on the front seat of the car where the driver was lying wounded. As the commotion intensified, the suspect is then seen helping get the injured driver out of the car. He then picks something up from the ground and then vanishes from the scene. Seconds later, he was seen making his way into the crowd. Commenting on the arrest, that state's top cop SP Vaid said, quote, The pistol has since been recovered and he is being questioned about his presence at the scene of the crime. So far, he has not been able to give any convincing answers. He also described the killing of the journalist as a terror attack, end quote. The police have said the identity of the other three attackers was being ascertained. Bukhari and his personal security officers were gunned down shortly after he got into the car while leaving his office at the press enclave in the city centre. The Indian Army soldier who was abducted by terrorists from Pulwama district in Jammu and Kashmir has been found dead. The uh, bullet riddled body of the soldier named Aurangzeb was found uh, at Gusu. This took place, of course, last evening. Now, Aurangzeb was a resident of the Punch district. The police and army had launched a massive search operation for the soldier. We're bringing this to your attention just to draw attention to the fact that this was yet another killing on the very same day in, Sh in Kashmir. But the violence hasn't taken a break. Just a day after Shujaat Bukhari and an Indian Army soldier's murders, two police personnel and two civilians were injured after terrorists fired at a police party in Srinagar. The attack took place near a dental college in Jammu and Kashmir's summer capital. According to reports, the terrorists managed to escape the attack site. Security forces have cordoned off the area and a search operation has been launched to nab the attackers. Now, while India's Home Minister Rajnath Singh is yet to take a call on the fate of the unilateral ceasefire announced during Ramzan, we just want to give you an idea of what all has happened in this uh, month-long ceasefire. The latest data compiled by the Union Home Ministry shows 100% rise in terror activity in the valley. More than 66 cases of terrorist attacks have been reported during this holy month of Ramzan. 22 cases pardon me, of grenade attacks on security installations were carried out and 23 cases of indiscriminate firing by terrorists was also reported. Now, cases of attacks on civilians also went up. Seven such attacks took place in the last 28 days alone. According to the government's data, as many as 23 young people were recruited by terrorist organizations during the first 19 days of the ceasefire's announcement. In terms of fatalities, 15 people have been killed due to the terror attacks. 50 people have been injured in grenade attacks in less than a month. And that's not all. On Friday alone, four grenade attacks were carried out in Jammu and Kashmir. So that gives you an idea of uh, how things stack up as far as Jammu and Kashmir goes.